Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusker here for another edition of the show. So I have yet another wine that was sent to me for review. Um, I have reviewed wines from this producer from a different part of France before. So I'm excited to try this one. Um, this is the 2014 Les Vignes de Bila Haute from the Côtes de Rousson village, village, villages, villages, the Côtes de Rousson villages. Um, by Michel Chaputier. Chaputier. I'm assuming I'm pronouncing his last name right. Not Chaputier or whatever. Chaputier. Um, this is a. Um, uh, so, Rousson is in the south of France. Um, actually, where, this, where these guys are are actually near the Spanish border on the south, you know, the south uh, part of France along the Mediterranean. Um, and uh, this is a wine with Syrah, Grenache, and Carignan. Uh, so who is, uh, well, first of all, Michel Chaputier. Um, so they've been around for a long time. I think I've got the, the winery or the company, not this winery, but the company, the parent company, was founded in 1808. Um, and they've got holdings in Rhone, Bordeaux, Burgundy, Languedoc, Rousson, which is this part. Uh, Portugal and Australia. Um, one of the things about um, the Rhone stuff is that their labels, and actually, huh, I didn't notice it until just now because I felt the label. Braille. This one even has the Braille too. So I don't know of any other winemaker that has Braille on their label so that somebody who's blind who can, can actually read the, read the label. I don't know of anybody else. I've never encountered anywhere else. Um, but I think all of their wines, I guess, I mean, I assumed all their wines were, but when I first picked up the bottle, I didn't, it wasn't obvious about the Braille, but now that I'm feeling the, the label, it's totally there. And you can see it now that you look for it. Um, so I think this is cool. Because that way, you know, if you're, if you're blind, you know, the back label doesn't have everything because it'd be kind of hard with all the small type there. Um, let's see. So anyway, so they've been making wine for a long time, these guys. So in 1999, the company purchased the property of uh, Bila Hut, uh, or Bila Hot, whatever. Um, blah, 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 blah. Neglected Rousson property. Uh, they were intrigued by the, la the lands, the lands varied mix of schist, gneiss, and clay. I assume it's pronounced nice, G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, or Nice. 190-acre um, estate on the slopes of the Ali Valley, or the Agli uh, Valley, lies in the commune of La Tour de France. La Tour de France, uh, not the Tour de France. Uh, as close as you can get to Spain while remaining in France. Um, it's a rugged country with a bunch of uh, bushes and trees. They also have, um, it says wild perfume, wild herbs that perfume the air, smoky rosemary, thyme, juniper, lavender, and olive. Um, while it's not very expensive land, it's very costly to farm the land. Um, steep slopes, um, r steep pebbly slopes rise dramatically almost 500 feet, of, 500 feet above the Mediterranean. And they say that Greek mariners brought vines to the region. And uh, climate-wise, uh, the Mediterranean is the vine's friend here, bringing neither rain nor cold, unlike the Atlantic in the north. France's southernmost wine, re wine region is never a wet or bad year. Further grounds for Chapoutier's optimism, cool winters and very hot summers, combined with little rain and the drying Mistral, which is the wind that comes down through basically eastern France 
to, to the Mediterranean. Um, breeze during the growing season uh, represent perfection for Syrah, Grenache, and Carignan. In some, as some respects, better than the Rhone Valley is what they're claiming. That's why he likes this area. Uh, the dryness means fewer plant diseases, enabling sustainable farming and low yields in the now lovely, lovingly revitalized vineyards of Bila Haute. Da, 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 da. And then apparently uh, there was a church established um, and it was part of the Knights Templar in the area. And then uh, that's that's basically that's basically it. Uh, it is suggested that it retails for about about fifteen dollars a bottle. So again, this was uh, donated to me by Creative Palette again. So they've they've been sending me some wines. They actually so this is the same company that asked me to to review another Chapoutier wine, which I'm going to tell them yes. I just you know at first I was going to do both of them, so I just did by itself. So um, yeah, they've been sending me some wines, so that's cool. I don't, I don't mind someone sending me a bunch of different wines because hey, it's great. All right, um, what else I was gonna talk about on this? Um, anything else in here? Somewhere on my notes, it says something. There's a collaboration with Australian winemakers Ron and Eva Lawton and Rousson. So I'm, I'm thinking that maybe this this is that. Probably got that from the um, uh, from the website. And there's a great map that I got from uh, Wikipedia that shows where all this is. But basically, it's when you take France, or in your case that, and you get this little area down here, and you got Spain. This is where we're talking about right there. All right. So 15 bucks, a nice little red wine. Let's check it out. I'm excited. I know they make good wines. I mean, the company, I've had, I've had the wines before, so. Hey, that cork was nice and easy. All right, let's do a little rinse of the, of the glass first. So I don't know if the, uh, you know, those other wines last time needed that rinse or not, but we're going to do it this time. So how you doing? All I've been doing is studying. Study, 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 and then work. All right, let's check out the wine. Kind of translucent, you know, you kind of see through it. Uh, a little bit of purple on the color. Kind of goes out to maybe a little bit, yeah, kind of a watery rim. But not like, not a deep, intense red or anything like that, but kind of say more purple. All right, on the nose. Kind of a tartness to it. Tart red fruits, cherries. This ain't cherries a lot the past three weeks, huh? A bit of earthiness to it. Again, cedar box. You know, in essence, well, last week and this week, I've done old world wine, so I'm getting old world types of uh, aromas. A bit of smokiness, but not like the smoke bomb is last time, but more more smokiness to it. And I would guess it's probably more of an herbal quality to it. Um, and I don't mean that kind of herbal. But I would say probably more like, like, I mean, not potpourri, but kind of like, you know, herbs and and wood and not so much fruit yeah 
a little bit of red fruit, but not a whole lot. Mmm. So when I was breathing out through my nose, got more of that, more of a floral, like, I guess lavender. I mean, maybe, you know, I know I read, I know I just read all that, but it really feels like that that stuff's in the wine. Um, you know, a floral aspect of potpourri, like you walked into a, you walked into a, um, a, a you know, a, 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 a shop that sells potpourri and, and, and spices and incense and things like that. Very much like that. Woodsy. You know, there's not a whole lot of fruit to this one, um, but it's very spicy, very spicy, very floral, very floral, um, woodsy. So it's great on the earthiness, the minerality, if you want to call it that. Not so much with um, and, and the floral, not so much with the fruit, not a whole lot of fruit. Um, tannin wise, I'd say medium, maybe medium minus on the tannins. It's not really drying up my mouth a lot. Um, acid was at least a medium plus. Um, got good, my mouth's watering a little bit. Um, so medium to medium plus in the acid. Uh, medium bodied wine, it's a pleasant wine. And this is definitely something where you, uh, roasted meats with the type of seasoning that you put on these meats would go really great with that. Um, or hams, I can see doing this. I, this would, I think it'd be a great like holiday wine, you know, fall type wine, holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, those types of um, those types of foods that you eat um, in, in the winter and the fall. You know, pumpkin pie type of stuff. You know that that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just it's incredible wine for fifteen dollars. Incredible. Okay, again, this is not you know, this is not. Hundred dollar bottle of wine, but for fifteen bucks, I I think it's a I think it's a steal. I mean, if I paid thirty bucks for it, I'd be happy. Olive, which you should get because there's Syrah in it. This is this type of wine is like right up my alley. I mean, it's just that's why I, I'm I'm thinking it's a really good value for fifteen dollars. If you want fruit in your wine, you will hate this wine. Not a lot of fruit. This is all about spices and olives and um, cedar and floral. It's all about that. This is old world wine. Really good value, I think. If you if 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 your if your favorite is the stereotypical Napa Cab fruit bomb or Australian Shiraz fruit bomb or whatever, you will hate this wine. You'll be like, Mark, you're an idiot. There's nothing good about this wine. But this is a wine that speaks to me. If you like that style, buy it. Find it, run to the store and get it. Wow, I haven't had a ringing endorsement in a while. Um, I, I cannot wait to drink more of this wine at the, at, with, with the right type of meal. And that's why I got the Corvin. This thing is like, I don't know. So I know I did like a little mini like point, you know, point something, point five episode that just went on YouTube. I didn't put it on my website or anything um, where I drank uh, a wine six months later after doing using the Corvin. I kind of forgot I had it in my wine cooler. Stayed in my wine cooler, um, which the wine cooler I have, this Danby 36 bottle wine cooler has been rock freaking solid. Every time I check the temperature, it's exactly where I want it to be. It's exactly 55, 56 degrees. 
Um, and that's on the top shelf where I have the thermometer. So it's probably closer to like 50 on the bottom. Um, it, it, it's, yeah, it can get kind of loud. Like if you don't, like you sometimes can hear it during the show and I try to minimize that sound through all post-production and all that great stuff. But um, it can, does make noise, but for the most part you, you get used to it. Um, it. It does a great job. So I've had it now for, I wanna say I've had it now for two years. Um, and it's been great, so I, I'm, I'm totally pleased with it. Let's put it that way. Um, I'm totally pleased with the Corvin. I've had this Corvin now for 10 months. It does the job. I mean, I have it at work, so I know it already works at work. Um, but for personal use, I know it's $300, and that's a big investment, um, especially if you're the type of person that you know only spends 20 bucks on a bottle of wine. But at the same time, if you wanna just have a glass or two at one sitting, and especially if you live by yourself and not wanna drink a whole bottle of wine, or you wanna course out a meal and only have a, a glass or two from each bottle, this thing is absolutely perfect. With synthetic corks, you do have to store it upright, but that's okay, because it's a synthetic cork. Um, the, the hole doesn't, the hole doesn't uh, seal as well or as quickly. Um, with synthetic corks, so you don't want to lay them on their side. Regular corks, you can, you know, a, a, give them time to seal, but you can put them back in into the cooler or lay them on their side. Um, but uh, you know, synthetic corks, you're probably going to have to keep them upright. But the the argon gas will, is heavier than oxygen, so it'll help. It'll still protect the wine, even if a little bit of oxygen gets into the hole. But um, other than that, it's great stuff. All right, um, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over here on the PayPal side to send me a few ducats to buy some more wine. Um, yes, I've had some donated wine, so that's awesome. It helps defray the cost. Um, but I still buy wine for the show. Leave comments below here or on YouTube or the website or whatever. Hit iTunes. Give me great ratings. Help me uh, on, the, uh, on the rankings there. Remember, I'm the only video wine show on iTunes. And then I do want to give a shout out to Levy Dalton. Uh, I, I, I got, I got like the bromance on that, this guy. Um, at least on my side, I do. Weekly, well, twice a week podcast about wine. If you're in the industry, you need to listen to him. I'll drink to that podcast. Um, he gets a five-star rating from me and uh, he always has the coolest people on. I wish I could, I wish I could be as good an interviewer. He's an awesome interviewer. Um, you know, my interviews, I just kind of sit back and let the guy talk. He actually asks questions and intelligent questions. He doesn't like to have some script. You know, he works with the conversation. Um, and also helps some of these people are in the New York area. So he knows them pretty well, but, um, he has a great show. So you should listen to it. it's about an hour long audio podcast only, but he does a great job. So, uh, and I hope to see him at Texom again this year. Maybe he and I can talk for more than three seconds like last year. All right. That's going to do it. That was my endorsement of another person's podcast who I think does a great job. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.